There are times in our lives that the Lord will lead us in a different direction to build our character that will give Him glory. Les Taylor, you know him as the lead vocalist and the rhythm guitarist of the country pop band Exile, with hits like I Want to Kiss You All Over, Give Me One More Chance, and She's a Miracle. And he has appeared on the Grand Old Opry over a hundred times. Through the years, Les has stood by his choice, made long ago that no matter what life brings, he will praise the Lord's name. This is his story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Les, I am thrilled to sit down with you here in Nashville. Well, thank you. I, I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> I am. I was just so excited that you wanted to be on our show. You know, I grew up with some of your songs. Mm -hmm. I want to kiss you all over. Oh, Lord. How many <laughs> times has everybody asked you to sing it? Can you just sing just a chorus? I want to kiss you all over. Mm -mm. And over again, I feel weird. That's okay. I want to kiss you all over. Bum, bum, bum. Thank till you. Till the night closes in. Till the night closes in. Do you sing it every time you go on? Yeah. Out? Yeah. 20. Yeah, if we didn't, that would, it's our most requested song to date. And Is that it was really? in 1978. I know. Yeah, it's, uh, if we didn't do that song, it, the folks wouldn't like it too much because and we and we wait till like actually the last song of the of the show uh to do that song <laughs> and if we didn't like i said they'd probably throw cans <laughs> at us or whatever well tell me how you got into music and growing up you grew up in london kentucky london kentucky mm -hmm. yeah yeah i grew up on a 40-acre farm, my mom and dad, I'm the youngest of nine kids. I grew up on, like I said, the 40-acre farm, and then we, we sold that like in 59, I think, maybe. We were, we were living like halfway between London, Kentucky, and Manchester, Kentucky, coal mining country. And we sold that place and moved to, into town, into the city limits of London, Kentucky. And uh, that is when I started playing guitar. My cousin and I, who is, he's from August to December, older than me. And How old were you? I think I was like 12 and a half. And we started yeah. playing guitar. Both of us started playing the very same day. He's, his father had a, an old K F hole acoustic guitar. And we learned how to play on that until we could get better instruments. <laughs> So what happened after that? Back in those days, instrumental, instrumental groups were, were real popular. And you had guys like Dwayne Eddy, Johnny and the Hurricanes, all those groups were instrumental groups. And we started playing, we formed a group called the Wanderers. <laughs> uh, it was myself, my cousin, uh, a guy named Roger Bentley, Freddie Aiden on saxophone, Sam Grigsby on drums, and Bill Bruner on bass guitar. And we did instrumental stuff for the longest time. And I was sitting in a um, homeroom on a f Friday afternoon waiting for school to, to be out. And over the intercom, it said, the Wanderers will be <laughs> performing for our sock hop at the high school gym this evening at whatever time, seven o'clock or whatever it was. And I thought, wow, that's nice. <laughs> Wish they would have told me. So we played that night and we made $4 a piece. 
and got there the was bug. a skating rink south of town. And word got out there before we could make it down after the show. A guy's name was Lester Finley. He owned the place. And word had gotten to him that we had a group and we went down and he talked to us that night. Uh, it was a great hamburger place and restaurant and had a skating rink in the back. And uh, we went down there after the show to get something to eat. And, and he hired us to play every Thursday night at the skating rink after he got word that we had a, a pretty good band, I guess. I don't know if, if that was the word he got or not, but he hired us. So. Well, after that, how did you become a member of the Exile Band? Exile started playing in Richmond, Kentucky in 1963. Then I started playing when I was in 1963 with a group from London, Kentucky. Well, later on, I joined a group from down the road in Corbin, Kentucky, which was 12 miles away. Uh, started playing with them, a group called the Ovations. And we played up in eastern Kentucky at this uh, youth center. And Exile would perform there on different nights, but on occasion, we would perform with them they would set up on one end of the building, we would set up on the other end of the building and switch off sets. And uh, so that, as time went by, their, their guitar player uh, went into the service. And uh, J.P. Pennington, who is the only original member, founder member in the band at this point, I went to see them in 1965 or 66, I believe it was, at a, at a place that they performed at in Richmond, Kentucky all the time, or a lot, uh, called Specs. So I went down to see them, and I heard that the, the J.P. was playing bass at the time, and I heard their guitar player was leaving, so I told J.P., I said, and I didn't even know J.P. played guitar, but I told him, I said, if you, if you guys decide to take on a guitar player, I said, I would love to, to be that person. And he said, okay. So 15 years go by. <laughs> And I was playing in 1979 at a club in Lexington called the Camelot, and we played there. I was I was working there. I had been there for about a year, so I was I was became real disenchanted with that. So JP came in one night, and it was talent night, and there was some people up on stage performing, and I was standing out talking to him. And he said, "Things aren't working out with the person that we have now that's singing with the band." He said, "If the opportunity came up, would." you'd be interested, and I said, yes, when? <laughs> so they hired me. Uh, my first show was August 10th, 1979. We got on a Learjet and flew from Lund uh, Lexington, Kentucky to DeCoin, Illinois, and opened for England Dan and John Ford Coley. So I thought, okay, this is nice. <laughs> you know, God has really taken you on a, a journey, starting from exile and I remember reading that you had a very low point in your life, and we're going to talk about that when okay. we come back. Right. Les, we were talking earlier about your journey that God has taken you mm -hmm. from the band to exile, and, and you were with them, and then you kind of went on on a solo right for a while, and. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your faith and what God has done um, in your life and, and some of the songs that, that you've written, um, and like in God We Trust. And uh, I, I remember reading a part of your uh, history that you're at a very low point in your life. Mm -hmm. And I shared that with you, of jo Pastor John Hagee. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about some of that. There was a time that I was doing really, really bad. Uh, I had uh, gotten into pain pills pretty heavy, and it was just, I don't know, it was just, uh, it was just crazy. It was crazy. I, I, I lost everything, uh, you know, which is the same old story that you hear with people that get involved with opiates, whatever, drugs of any kind. It's just a, it's just a street to nowhere, you know, and uh, and so I I had that happen to me. It was uh, it was just a, just a horrible time, horrible horrible time. Uh, my mother was still alive, 
she was such a godly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. She was a godly woman. She was a prayer warrior. And I really believe that if it, if it hadn't have been for her praying for me, I wouldn't have made it. With her, without her and, and God's help, obviously. And I was sitting, I was living, uh, I, was living I had a roommate at the time, but he was hardly ever there. Uh, so I was sitting in the apartment by myself on a Sunday morning. I uh, tuned in to John Hagee, Cornerstone Church's um, religious program on Sunday mornings that he has, still has. I uh, started listening to him, and uh, boy, you know, the tops of my feet were bruised <laughs> from him stomping on them in his, in his sermon that morning. So it just, it, 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 you know, uh, you had T. Graham on, and he was talking about, I, I, about his uh, transformation as well. And I, <clears throat> I didn't have a, a real heavy God talking to me moment, but I, I know he was because uh, through Pastor Hagee, obviously, you know, and and I was I was sitting there watching him preach and listening to him and what he was saying, and it just I don't know it something something clicked. Shortly after that, uh, I was going to the church where my sister uh, attends has been for thirty something years, I guess. Gave my gave myself to the Lord I, I, and and was baptized, and uh, it's just been one awesome experience it's just uh it's really it's it's hard to describe it's just it's just wonderful and uh, and like t graham mentioned in his segment with you it's just the peace that you have that knowing that no matter what happens you have him to turn to and to ask to help you and if i didn't have that i don't know i don't know what i would be i don't know how i how i would be i really don't well, you know, I read that in everything you do now, it's to honor Him. And you wrote, um, or you sang, did you write the song? No. no. The two singles that I put out, In God We Trust, was the second one, and, and If That Mountain Don't Move is the first one. I didn't write either one of those songs. I wish I had it because they're great songs. I love both of them. But the words in If That Mountain Don't Move, mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people say, if, if you have faith, you can move a mountain. Well, sometimes, tell me what those words are that you well, will, or that, that you sing. I don't know if you researched who wrote that song or not. I did, but I can't think of the name. Gerald Crabb. Oh, yes, 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 I did. I mean, and, enough. And we're friends enough with, said, you know, we're friends with said. it, yeah. I mean, yes. you, the, the songs I that did. he's written mm -hmm. are just absolutely some of the best gospel songs i've ever heard in my life he my wife was uh was friends with him on facebook and i know just out of the blue i said well face you know facetime him and ask him or not facetime him, but facebook him and ask him if he's got some songs he can send me she did and he said well i do have some songs i'll send you and i'll, I'll get them to you right away he did it was like six six songs i guess and um uh, uh, mountain was one of them. If that mountain don't move was one of them. And I don't know who was doing the, the demo on it, but it sounded like this guy, Keb Moe. Have you ever heard of this guy? He's, he's just, he's tremendous. And I love his voice. So he, he sold me the song. It could have been a bad song, and I would have liked it because the, the demo vocal was so good. But I loved the song and what it was saying. So uh, I ended up, I, I, I called, uh, got back with Gerald and told him I really wanted to do the song. And he said, well, it's, it's yours if you want to record it. I had met this little man from Hamburg, Arkansas. Actually, he's originally from Crossit. He lives in Hamburg, Arkansas now. Crossit, Arkansas is where my wife is from, and he used to go to their church when he was a... Uh, his mother brought him there when he was a baby. This is a long story. You may want to break this up, but anyway, I'll start. He and I became friends. My wife and I went over to Hamburg to see him over Christmas holidays when he was, he was singing and ministering in this little church. 
country church in Hamburg, Arkansas. So we went over and saw him, met him, talked to him that night. He gave me some CDs that he recorded. All of the songs, probably, I, I guess, 90% of them he had written. Jamie Coulter is his name. He was born with osteogenesis imperfecta, which is brittle bone disease. He's had 300, over 300 broken bones in his body, and he's had over 20 surgeries. Well, Les, we are going to talk about that okay. and, and more about what God tells us. Uh, if we can't, if you don't move that mountain, what do we do when we come exactly. back? Okay. Les, we we're talking about Jamie, but before we get to that story, can you share with me a few of the lyrics of the song, If That Mountain Don't Move? I've spent long nights when sleep never came, and it seemed that my loss outnumbered my gain. Still I held on to hope, cause it led the way I made it through. Lord, I brought nothing here when I came, so if I lose it all, I still praise your name. I have peace of mind. I know you'll teach me to climb if that mountain don't move. I Pretty love much. it. <laughs> I love it because a lot of people get <clears throat> focused on trying to move the mountain and sometimes the Lord tells us to climb. Exactly. And um, so tell me more about Jamie. We had met Jamie in Hamburg, Arkansas at the little Christian, little Baptist church down there. We got to talking and he called me one day and he said, do you want to record that song that you got from Gerald? We'll go in the studio if you do and we'll go whenever you want to go. So he took me into TBN Studios mm -hmm. out in Hendersonville and we cut that song. Jason did back vocals and there was a lady by the name of Charlotte, I think her name was, that sang back vocals on it. She's just a terrific singer. You would know her and I'm so sorry that I don't remember her name, but we ended up we ended up cutting that song. Jamie, I mean, he 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 took care of everything with this. You know, the cost of doing it, of the recording the song, and we uh, released it. If it, if it hadn't been for Jamie, I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to do those songs. I wouldn't have probably at some point later on I would have gotten to it. Maybe I don't know, but uh, he he kind of pushed me to do that to do these songs, first one in particular. We recorded the song, we, we put it out, and, uh, and it went to number one. There's an online reporting uh, gospel music uh, entity. It's called Cashbox. It used to be in print, but now it's, on, it's an online uh, company. It went to number one there, it went to number one in Christian Voice. So after that, we went in and did a song that Jamie wrote called In God We Trust. Yeah, I want to hear about that. What, what's uh, the song all about? Well, it's, it's, it's part patriotic, it's, it's part spiritual. We, we once could pray in all of our schools, but it's different now. They're not the same. The question is, who is to blame? You know, and then, the, then of course, it goes, it's time, but basically it's time to get back uh, to in God we trust. It says, we fly our flag, with, with pride we salute. We're number one, red, white, and blue. We should all agree we've had enough. It's time to get back to in God we trust. And isn't that the message for today? It, it's more so now, way more so now than it was when we I know. recorded it and released it. What would you say to somebody that has gone some of you through the similar struggles that you have gone through? Grab hold of all of the love of Christ that you can get into your life. I mean, you know, I, I, grew, I grew up in the church. My mom and my dad were re very super religious people. They took me to church every time they went, which was <clears throat> all the time. It, all of us kids that were left at, at, still at home, we went to church until we moved out of the home. So it was, you know, I, I was raised in church but I got away from it. I strayed away thinking that I knew a better way to handle my life, and I didn't. And it took me a while to find that out. And, you know, the, the stuff that I have put myself through over the years, 
It's nobody but God who got me through that. Nobody but God who got me through that. I, it's just, I'm not supposed to be here. It's His, it's his will, you know, that I, that I am still here. Now you went through the solo career. And God gave you that time and you reunited with exile mm -hmm. and tell me where god is leading you now well i'm I, uh, I i'm just trying to be what he wants what he wants me to be uh, uh, and I, and <laughs> again like t graham said i'm not so sure what that is what what he wants me to be but i'm doing what the teachings are and that is if I can bring somebody to the Lord, that's, that's what I want to do. And I want to be a beacon for somebody else to follow. And I hope I can, uh, I hope I can do that. Uh, I hope I can be that person that may say something to somebody in our travels, whatever, that will make them think about, you know, where they are and where they want to go and what they're doing. Well, let's go and talk about a, your traveling. What's it like to be on the road? How many, oh, God. How many hours or, or days are you on the road now? We do probably, <clears throat> I guess, 70 shows, 60, 70 shows a year. It's as much fun or more now than it was back in the 80s when we were having the hits because most of that I don't remember. I really don't. And that's, that's sad. That's sad that you have, that you work to to get the success and then you do everything you can to ruin it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so stupid, the thinking. I, didn't, I, th I, I used to think that I couldn't go on stage and perform unless I was high or I was drinking or something, you know. So that's not the case <laughs> anymore. Well, and, and it's so, it, it's, it's and your so music, great. <laughs> and your music has kind of transformed too. Mm -hmm. And I, you've been on the Grand Old Opry how many times now? Over a hundred times. Over a hundred times. What's yeah. that like? It's, I mean, it's it's just the ultimate, ultimate place to be with your music. If you're in country music, it, well, whatever, gospel music, country music, R and B music, they have all that on there anymore on the Opry, you know, pretty much. And uh, you know, we were doing real quickly. I'll try to share this with you. We were doing the Ryman one night. You know, they moved down there during the winter months, some of them. And we were doing the rhyming. <clears throat> and you're out there, you know, you're in that circle, whether it be the opera house or that the rhyming. And, you know, but we were at the rhyming. We were doing this Curtis Mayfield song called People Get Ready. And we do it a cappella with a very little uh, electric guitar accompaniment. And we were singing that song. And Sonny, our bass player, said that, and, and I felt the same thing, but he told me this after we did it. He said, I looked up while we were doing that song to, at those stained glass windows up there, and he said, chills came over me. And, and I felt the same thing. I just didn't know, I didn't know he was feeling it too, you know. And so it's, it's just, it, it's such a pleasure to be on that show, and it's such an honor. It's an honor, really. Over a hundred times. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Real quick. Where well, next year we are going into the 60th year of the band. And I've been there for almost 50 of them. Last. That is incredible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, we're, we're hoping and we're gearing up for some big things. We're releasing a new album, CD, whatever they're calling them nowadays. Well, I just want to thank you so much thank you. for sharing your, your life, your faith. I know you have touched somebody today. I hope so. Thank you, Les. That would be my wish. Thank you. My friend, if that mountain doesn't move, just remember that sometimes the Lord wants you to, you to climb it. Do it today, and whatever you do, give honor and glory to Him. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Amen. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.